Hi, my name is Sasha. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in the first quarter of the year 2021. I have been off booktube for a while, so I haven't been doing monthly wrap-ups. So I thought this was the best way to talk about all the books I've read, which is eight. I've only read eight books this year, but that's pretty normal for me. I don't read a ton of books per month because I'm like, I have like an internet addiction. <laughs> I have an internet addiction and um, I'm usually on the computer, although I try to fit in chapters in between like watching a YouTube video or playing a video game. But you know, um, it works and it doesn't. So the first book that I read in 2021 was Fangs by Sarah Anderson. And this is a com compilation of like web comics. Um, and it's about a vampire and a werewolf who fall in love at a bar. And it is adorable. <laughs> and it is so funny is so full of puns and it is just the absolute cutest thing ever and I gave it five stars um, that's gonna be a theme I gave six out of the eight books five stars but we're talking about fangs and fangs I gave five stars just because of you know it was just fantastic and like if you want something light and short and funny I would definitely pick up fangs the second book that I gave five stars and the second book that I read in 2021 was Wondersmith, The Calling of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. I don't think I could give a Morgan Crow book less than five stars. Like, they are just so much fun and Morgan Crow is so relatable. Like, she loves the color black and doing magic and, like, that's me to a T. Um, and she's just, the stories are so, it's just so wholesome, like Unit 919 and the whole found family kind of aspect, forced family kind of, because they're just kind of forced to be around each other, but they kind of become a family anyway. I just loved it. I loved it a lot. I love the Morgan Crow books and I can't wait for the fourth one to come out. I'm currently reading the third one and I'm hoping to finish it today, but... Yeah, I just love Morgan Crow books. Now I can move on to books that I actually have in my possession. And the next book that I read was Maps by Narudin Farah. Um, this is a book that I had to read for my literary theory class and I disliked it. Um, I gave it 1.5 stars. <sighs> How do I describe this book? It's about this kid named Asgar and three different points of his life when he's like one years old, when he's seven years old, when he's 17 years old. They kind of all weave together. He's kind of, he just kind of misremembers things. It's, it's a really complicated book. It's a really complicated story. And it's, I, I just don't, it was, I don't know how to describe it. First of all, it's very Freudian. And uh, I hate Freud. I think he's a disgusting pig. Um, I know he founded psychoanalytic theory, but like who comes up with incest theories to d explain childhood sexuality? Who even wants to explore the world of childhood sexuality? Like, it makes me very frustrated as someone who got into this degree, the English degree, to read about things like, I don't know, read interesting things. To be confronted immediately by Freud, it made me so mad. And the, the thing about this book, trigger warnings for incest survivors, there's heavily implied incest in this book. And I just thought it was gross. I didn't like it. it made me uncomfortable. Um, and I don't think that it was interesting. It's about Askar during the Ogaden War. He lives in um, Kalafo, which was besieged, and he had to move to Mogadishu as a refugee 
a, an actual book about the war, the Ogaden War, and the struggle, and the struggle over um, disputed territories like the Ogaden would have been really interesting. This was not that. This was internal, the mostly internal discussion of Asgard's memories and his identity, and I didn't care about Asgard enough to want to explore his entire life in a book. And so that's why I gave it 1.5 stars, and I hope to never pick up anything by Nerun and Farah again. But we ne you never know when you're going through an English degree what they're going to throw at you. The next book I read was The Chocolate War by Robert Cormier, or Cormier. I never know with those Frenchy names. Um, I gave this four stars. It's about this kid named Jerry. He goes to school um, where there's like a gang called the Vigils. It's in like the 70s when people were still like mad at hippies for something, for like protesting the Vietnam War or whatever. I don't know. But um, the school wants them to sell chocolates to raise money for the school and Jerry is like opposed to it. It's kind of Marxist, which I found really interesting as someone who's only just started reading Marx and exploring Marxist theory um, or materialist theory, depending on who you ask. Um, it's a, supposedly like a classic YA novel, like an old classic. I liked it, actually. I thought it was pretty interesting. I thought if you explore it from a postmodernist um, Marxist perspective, you can see a lot of how it's capitalism ingrained in the system that drags Jerry down and ultimately kills him. That's kind of a spoiler. Oh my god, she's so loud. She, it's kind of a spoiler, but it's kind of not, because why would you want to read this book? It's like old and no one cares. <laughs> the next book I read, which was so lovely, it was a reread was The Lightning Thief um, by Rick Riordan. So I read this on audiobooks, but I have the physical book here. I have two copies of the physical book. I don't know how that happened, but I have them. So I'll probably give one away to um, a charity bookstore. But yeah, I reread it on audio, and it was so nice to re-explore this world. Because I, I read up to, like I think, The Sea of Monsters before... I got sidetracked like years and years ago and it's so like the world is so complex and like interesting and the magic systems and like the the exploration of Greek myths is like so fascinating because it's like introducing like p middle graders to this huge world of mythology while also giving them an interesting story to read about. It's like, it was such a good idea, like, for a book, and I'm, like, so glad somebody wrote it, and especially Rick Riordan, because he seems like such a chill guy. And I'm just, like, so glad that I read this again, and I'm currently on The Sea of Monsters, 80% through on audio, and I'm so glad I'm reading it again. It's so much fun! Next, for my young adult fiction class, I read, oh, did I tell you that the chocolate war was for my adult fiction class? Anyway, I read The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, and I was, it was stunning. It's a stunning book, um, and it's told in verse about Zia Mara and her, basically her building Roman, basically becoming a mature, more mature person growing through these things, finding things she loves, finding her reason, her reason to exist, I guess. It, it was just, it's so beautiful, and I know now why so many people love Elizabeth Acevedo, and I'm so glad I have her other two books on hand to read, because just absolutely beautiful book. Um, I could go through and highlight all the lines that I loved, and I probably will, because um, I just started getting into annotating. So yeah, if you're looking for a novel in verse, 
read the poet X. And I didn't say it before, but I gave The Lightning Thief five stars. Another book that I read for my young adult fiction class was actually a graphic novel. And that is American Born Chinese by Jean Wen Yang. And this, I read it once before when I was younger, probably in my teen years, early teens, and I did not like it. <laughs> um, I didn't understand a lot of what was happening. And that's important to a lot of, I guess, white kids' growth is finding, like, empathizing with other people's, like, people of color, BIPOC people, their stories and being exposed to them. I had never been exposed to BIPOC stories in school. And so when I was first exposed to this, I was like, what the hell is going on, first of all? And a lot of it is overtly racist tropes being reclaimed by this author and that's what kind of threw me off as a kid was like why is this guy being so racist <laughs> and the thing about American Born Chinese it's about Jin Wang who comes to this new school this new city and um, he was the only Asian kid although other Asian characters are introduced it also tells two other stories, one of the Monkey King, who is big in Chinese lore, and um, this kid named Danny, whose cousin Chin Ki, which if you say that really fast, you'll understand why I thought it was so racist, um, and his cousin visits, and he's embarrassed by him because of how Asian he is. Um, so as a, as a kid, I didn't get it. I just did not get this book. But as a 20-something year old, reading it over again, I, I got it. Like, I was like, this book is reclaiming racist stereotypes, reclaiming its Asian-ness, and celebrating it. And I think that's really, really just absolutely gorgeous. It was, it it was funny, it was, um, it was celebrating the Asian, the Chinese heritage of the author and the characters, and I'm, I think that this, looking back, um, I think that we really need to expose white kids to a lot of different BIPOC stories because like it was it was hard for me to empathize which I feel like a lot of people don't talk about when you're white and you're taught not to empathize with people of color and BIPOC people and getting that in your face you're like what the hell like I have to change myself and yes you do you have to change like part of yourself to empathize with other people outside of who you are and I feel like that's not talked about enough in like anti-racist um, or at least I don't see it talked about enough in anti-racist um, activism is how white kids are not given opportunities to empathize with BIPOC stories early on in life and so I think that my childhood, my upbringing was very privileged and also very sheltered. There were very few um, children of color at my school and that kind of continued on until high school and so I was not introduced to these stories and I think it's it's critical to introduce stories like that and people have like unsegregated schools just like for white kids to not turn into these hate mongering like hateful people maybe I'm going on a tangent and I need to <laughs> scale it back a little bit but yeah that's what I have to say and I'm really glad I read that book and it was really good I gave it five stars the last book that I read um, in the first quarter of 2021 was Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers and 
first off, I gave this five stars. I love this book. I absolutely adore it with my whole soul and my whole heart. It made me cry. Um, it felt like a lot, I mean, a lot of this, it's centered around a black lesbian and a lot of the story is written specifically for black queer people and I still found a part of myself in it and if you can do that if you can write stories centering marginalized identities while also giving and this whole full scope of people being able to empathize with your work I think that's a beautiful thing and this book is like it's it was marketed a little strangely as like perhaps this fluffy romance where um, this girl goes to Vegas and gets drunk married to a girl she's never met it's not that it's a deep exploration of the anxiety of not knowing where you fit in of being black and having this glass ceiling that you can't break through to in academics academia and this exploration of queer love and love for yourself there's so much love at the center of this book queer love self-love family love the relationships between people and the people they've chosen to be their family it was and I don't know <laughs> I just get really um, like not heated but like worked up when I talk about this book because it's so beautiful to me and um, meant so much to me and I know a lot of people don't agree with me but it's just there are parts of this book that felt like they were written for me like the anxiety rep the feeling of being lost, the feeling of being a lonely creature, um, who you feel like you'll never be reached by anybody, and it was just, oh, so good. Um, and I'm, I'm reading back through it and annotating, um, for the first time in my whole life, annotating a book, and underlining not underlining but highlighting passages that spoke to me and it's it's been a great experience and so that's enough of that um those are the books i read in the first first quarter of the year um it was only eight so don't come for me i read very slowly <laughs> um i had a great time with these books if i gave six out of eight of them five stars you know i was having a good time um I chose well. Um, tell me what you read in the first quarter of the year. What were your favorite books that you read? And that's all for me for now, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!